Hey there, Truster fans. Welcome to uh, another uh, Friday coffee break. Although, I think in all honesty, we ought to think about renaming it into uh, a Saturday morning coffee break because, quite frankly, Friday is, uh, is the day that I'm producing the video. And by the time I'm done, even though I spend the entirety of the week on gathering things that I want to talk about, but still, by the time I'm done on Friday morning, slowly becomes... Uh, you know, in afternoon, and by the time the video comes out, it's al almost Friday night. I know you guys are not going to be watching this on Friday night, so if you do watch this, it's probably going to be Saturday. And I don't know, that way I uh, I get a chance to, uh, you know, say Shabbat Shalom to our Jewish friends, and uh, um, it's basically, I, I think it just makes a lot more sense when you, uh, you know, get your coffee going in the morning on Saturday, you sit out if the weather is fine, or if you sit back in your kitchen listening to, uh, to me rant for a few minutes, so... I think it makes perfect sense. So I guess I'm going to experiment a little bit and uh, name this one Saturday Morning Coffee Break. And uh, if you have anything to say about it, the comment section is always open. You know how to get in touch with Trustra. So we're looking forward to hearing from you, as you know, anytime, anywhere, on any of our media, social media, on any of our communication ch channels. So this is what's called community building. Um, anyway, so let me just get to it. Okay, here's one from Coindesk, um, and Coindesk is, uh, as usual, being a dick about its f website formatting. I mean, it, I guess it's progressive and everything. People look at the uh, production value on the website and they go, wow, Coindesk is really awesome. But to me, it's just a freaking bother. So again, I'm going to use my reader. Um, uh, how to make money from the crypto backlash. This is basically... Um, it's actually an uh, excerpt from the uh, from the code the magazine that Coindesk releases, I think, weekly. Uh, so you do very well subscribing to it because they have some great materials on there. Uh, but this particular article is like, um, uh, it's not exactly a roadmap for you to become a millionaire while crypto is down, but it just gives you an over, overview of uh, what's going on in the space so you get yourself better oriented. And uh, hopefully, um, I don't think uh, the article tells you how to make money. It basically just goes over the situation so that you don't lose any more than you already lost. I think I think it's a pretty great piece. Got some um, got some cool links in it. So by all means, check it out. Here's one from CNBC. It's a very nice piece on algorithmic stable coins. I urge you to familiar uh, familiarize yourself with this concept because it's going to be popping up all over the place. Um, you know, for for the foreseeable future. This concept, I think, it's like pirating uh, data from other people. No more, no less. I think my personal opinion. Um, even though Vitalik Buterin may have something to say about it, but my personal opinion on algorithmic stablecoins is that not only do they not have the right to exist, but I think it's almost criminal from the uh, ethical uh, standpoint to uh, introduce the uh, unsuspecting, unassuming public to the concept of a of an algorithmic stablecoin because they don't stand for anything other than data packs that they transfer in between protocols. But people are made believe that these are actual stablecoins that represent real value. I think it's it's just dirty. I think it's one of those dirty games that, um, you know, that were played in, in 2016, 2017. But I don't think um, I don't think we have the moral right to continue playing those games. But apparently we do. We do continue to play those and quite successfully. So uh, just read this piece. It's um, it's very nice. It's got uh, plenty of great um, links and uh, um, yeah, just check it out. It's, it's, I, th I think it's pretty good. Uh, this is a pretty good, um, a pretty interesting piece from Reuters. Um, the uh, the New York Fed's uh, president, chairman, um, had said that it's uh, absolutely critical for banks to uh, understand what CBDCs are and what, what is digital money and the difference between, uh, uh, if I may say, regular dollars and digital dollars, even though uh, all money is basically digital these days. And whenever you hear things like uh, 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 the Federal Reserve System's been printing money, that doesn't actually mean that there's a printing press somewhere in the back and that, that's that's you know spitting out brand new banknotes uh so again this i, I think you, I, I think it's crucial for you guys to uh, really get into the whole money thing and uh just basically realize what money is and what money does for you because when it comes to digital money and we're pretty much that year is upon us whenever we have to switch uh switch to all digital you're gonna have to you know uh, hark back to that expertise that you're gaining today and it's, it, it's just important. It's very crucial, especially if you want to be in the crypto space. So that's a nice piece right over here. Yeah, what they do is they just get together uh, with a uh, Michigan University professor and buy a uh, Quest 2 
a VR set for $300 and, and just get deep into the metaverse the way it exists today. There are some pretty cool jokes in the article and the moral of the story is probably that uh, the metaverse, well, I, I don't want to spoil anything for you. Just read the piece. It's pretty cool. It's got some cool links. So you'll be informed. Uh, you, you, you get some pretty useful information on what the metaverse is and how it works. It's just, it's about nuts and bolts of it. It's not something, you know, some inspirational uh, marketing bullshit about metaverses being our future. It's basically what it is today and what it's going to be, you know, a few years, um, a few years from now. So very practical, very cool piece. Check it out. Um, I really like this piece from the FinTech Times. It's basically, uh, they're asking a bunch of uh, CEOs and professors and academics and uh, 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 digital entrepreneurs about the, uh, the most important innovation in FinTech they, they think there is right now. Yeah, there's some great insights in this article. Please check it out because, I mean, there's some names for you to Google. So uh, this will keep you informed. Uh, there's one thing, it's actually, I, I wanted to bring in a, sort of a new rubric for my uh, uh, Friday review, well, Saturday reviews. I want to go through, uh, I want to go through the crypto Twitter and see what's going on. I mean, let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to keep doing this. It's pretty cool. I mean, this, this, this news really jumped up in me like a couple of hours ago when I was preparing uh, for this video. Uh, new York lawmakers pass a moratorium on Bitcoin mining. Okay, I haven't opened the article yet, but I got to tell you, it is still beyond me. Why is Bitcoin mining actually legal? I really have no idea why didn't the uh, the state apparatus, the powers that be, uh, illegalized this practice a long time ago? Because for thousands of years, it was always a prerogative for the government, for the uh, for the authorities to mint coin and uh, formulate the monetary policy. And now we're living, you know, we're living in a time when private money is basically, well, I don't want to say it's taking over the. Uh, the fiat money, but it's really, you know, putting its foot in the door and telling the state apparatus that, hey, we can we can uh, mint coin too, so why not delegate that prerogative to us? And to me, it's just really mind blowing. So uh, manufacturing bitcoins in, in your basement or at a mining facility is and then releasing that coin, you know, into the wild. The New York legislators want to uh, limit mining in the New York in New York state because uh, because of the environmental impact. But I think it has to go much deeper than that. Uh, just imagine the situation when just about anybody in their basement can manufacture money because Bitcoin is basically uh, used in many cases as, as a unit of account and store of value and, uh, and an investment vehicle. So rolled in together, it basically one of the, uh, and also according to some of, the, uh, some of the most vocal proponents of Bitcoin, all those qualities, all those traits rolled in together represent uh, the perfect sound money. I mean, I'm going to send you back to the Keynesian theory, but... Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of beyond me. Why is it still legal? There's just so, I guess there's just so much money sloshing around in that industry that it's, I, I just, I'm not sure uh, what else to think about it. I mean, we know the uh, quantitative easing practices have, you know, thrown in so much, you know, so much unbacked uh, cash into the uh, global economy that now we have to figure out what to do with those, you know, ones and zeros. But I don't know if this is the way to go. But anyway, I mean, people are going with it. So you read the, read the article and, and be the judge. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, so let's go back to, uh, let's go back to crypto Twitter. I love it. The Bank of England governor is openly arguing that household incomes must be sacrificed to fight inflation so that corporate profits can be maintained. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to open this article, uh, by all means, check it out. You, you see it all on your screen. Uh, whose Twitter feed is it? Is it on? So you can, you can easily, um, uh, check that person out and check it out. But, uh, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, th these are the times that we're, that we live in. I mean, the, the bank governors are openly coming out saying that we have to, I mean, curbing inflation is not the concern number one. The concern number one is, uh, you know, making money in whatever circumstances we the, we the people live in. So it's kind of disgusting. Um, but let's hope that creating an alternative economy is something that's, you know, derived from technological advances like cryptocurrencies and stable coins, r real stable coins, not algorithmic ones. Uh, let's hope that this alternative will, you know, make those people's heads spin and uh, they'll, you know, think twice before throwing us under the bus. Us, the public. Wow, this is so cool. Facial reconstruction of Stafford Roadman, who would have been part of uh, one of the earliest Saxon migrations to Britain. <laughs> and I, I got this, this tweet right here. <laughs> Every single pub in England uh, has kicked this man out, said he's banned, then let him come back in after a month, restarting the cycle. Funny. I'm going to give the kid a like. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, uh, you do very well uh, following Professor uh, Richard Werner. I've never heard or seen anyone explaining quantitative easing and some of the some of the least palatable practices in uh, modern banking that there are. I mean, this guy's absolutely brilliant. Uh, check him out and follow him on Twitter. Uh, you're not you're not going to regret it. I mean, the, the, the smarts on this guy are sky high. So 
do yourself a favor of follow him. I'm going to watch this discussion later on. Molly White. I love Molly. Well, <laughs> I love Mo I love Molly. Um, she's one of the most uh, vocal uh, anti-crypto person personalities, but unlike just some Twitter FUD, she is very knowledgeable. So she's a software engineer and she knows what she's talking about. Uh, and of course, let's not forget Trustra's YouTube channel. Um, hopefully you're already subscribed. And if you're not, please hit that magic button. But um, uh, since we saw each other last time, last Friday, we released a couple of videos. I wanted to check them out. Hey, welcome to Trustra. I'm here. Yeah, especially the one about the history of crypto. Um, I don't mean to bore you with my mug more than I absolutely have to. But I guess since the uh, the talking head is the format for our videos, you're going to have to look me in the eye every once in a while. But this video, I really encourage you to check it out. I put a lot of effort into it. I gathered, I gathered a lot of information. And if you're if you're crypto curious, I think, and if you're if you're a beginner in the space, I think you're going to like it. Anyways, yeah, this is it for uh, for this uh, Saturday's uh, morning coffee break. I hope you liked the video, and I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you on Monday when I do my news reel. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, talk soon.